Hello and welcome to See This If. This is going to be a different type of review because it's not going to be about new releases. And yes, if you are concentrating, I have had a haircut. Today's focus will be on the Mission Impossible franchise. With Mission Impossible Fallout coming out later this summer, I thought it'd be a good idea to try and recap some of the stories as well as give them a bit of a review. It's been over 20 years since the release of the first one, so it's interesting to see how this franchise has evolved. So we begin with Mission Impossible, released in 1996 and directed by Brian De Palma. I remember watching this in the cinema with my mother and feeling so sorry for her because I was constantly whispering to her and asking her what was going on. For some reason, my age group didn't get the plot. It was very dense in terms of its narrative and it seemed complicated. Now re-watching it, obviously I understand what's going on now and I'm thinking, what was my problem? The plot essentially revolves around Ethan Hunt and his team trying to stop a list that involves um, secret agents and their identities across the globe uh, from being released to the wrong people and his team die and he gets set up for it. So to prove his innocence he decides to steal the list and try and sell it to an arms dealer that goes by the name of Max in exchange for the person that set him up. And that's the basic gist of it. The film itself is going to be remembered for one sequence in particular where Hunt is in the room where the list is and you can't do anything in the room. A Quiet Place released this year was obviously inspired by this film because when I went to go and see it in the cinema, I remember everybody stopping eating their popcorn and just transfixed by what was happening on the screen. You really wanted Hunt to get away with it. And if you haven't seen it, I do advise you to watch it, even just for this sequence. Look it up on YouTube if you don't want to go and see the whole film. It is surprisingly, the shortest of all of the films in the franchise. Mission Impossible 2, like its predecessor, was again completely different to the rest of the franchise. It was released four years later in 2000 and directed by John Woo. They decided to go with a different director because they wanted a different feel to the film and you certainly get that. Mission Impossible 2 is everything Mission Impossible wasn't. There's a lot more action in it. There's definitely John Woo staples in it. You've got your slow-mo action, you've got your white doves, you've got people diving through the air, shooting guns, and a lot of explosions. The plot involves a virus which has been created by a scientist, and it will kill people in 27 hours or less. A rogue IMF agent takes control of this virus and threatens to release it upon the world, unless he is paid a vast sum of money. And it's a bit more violent, it got a 15 rating, meaning 15 years old and older can see it. So yeah, um, it's probably the weaker element of all of the uh, films, but it is still an enjoyable film to watch, just because it's ludicrously silly, but it knows that and it has a lot of fun with it. Mission Impossible 3 was released six years later and was directed by J.J. Abrahams in his directorial feature film debut. It starts with Ethan, who is strapped to a chair and facing a woman, also in the same predicament, but with a gun to her head. The gun is held by Philip Seymour Hoffman, who is giving him to the count of ten to reveal where the rabbit's foot is. Now, the rabbit's foot is not necessarily an important device in the film. We never find out what it is, nor is the film concerned with revealing what it is. We don't find out what it is in subsequent films, and that doesn't matter. What does matter is that that has laid the plot for the action. 
and Mission Impossible 3 has some really great action sequence in it. In fact, it has the best baddie, in my opinion, out of the whole of the franchise. Philip Seymour Hoffman is fantastic in his role. He's just a bit underutilised. Go and see this film if you enjoy a mixture of complex plot and action. Mission Impossible 4, or Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, was released five years later. If you've been counting, that's 2011. It was directed by Brad Bird, who also directed my favourite Pixar film, The Incredibles. The plot is carefully considered, and all the action accumulates to a very unforgettable climax. The plot involves a madman who has researched and lectures on nuclear war games and decides to play one out. Ethan Hunt and his team are there to try and stop him. The bad guy is played by Michael Nivkist. I can't pronounce it, I do apologise if uh, I've offended anybody. Uh, unfortunately he passed away a couple of years ago. I thought he was a great actor, uh, featured in The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the original Swedish version, not the remake with Daniel Craig. In this film you see Tom Cruise climbing the Burj Khalifa in a very, what's the most diplomatic way to put this, and not reference to genitalia. That's a difficult one. Let's just say certain parts of your body will go up inside you as you watch the sequence on the Burj Khalifa as Tom Cruise climbs it with just a pair of sticky gloves that don't work. That's what I really like about this film is the fact that they decided to focus on gadgets that don't work and it really builds into the tension because you expect in this type of film, in this type of genre, that the one thing that doesn't fill you is the gadgets. Everything else can go belly up, but the gadgets work. And in this one, they decided to focus on that. And it brings a great humour to the film as well, which Tom Cruise is surprisingly good at, because it's nice and subtle and complements uh, the action very well. Mission Impossible 5, or Mission Impossible Rogue Nation as it's called, was released in 2015, that's four years after the previous entry, and it retains the tone of the previous film, but it's a little bit more unbalanced. I feel like it shoots its gun a little bit too quickly in terms of the fact that the opening sequence is one of the bigger stunt sequences. Whereas in Ghost Protocol, there's a nice build-up to the uh, action sequences and each one is more tense than the previous one. In this one, there is incredible action in this film. You get a great motorcycle chase and a great car chase for that matter. And there's an underwater sequence that makes you hold your breath but also makes you want to gasp at the same time but it does feel a little bit more uneven in terms of the action. It's a lot more complex as well. It does treat the audience like it has a brain and there's a lot of things going on. This film is probably going to be the one that is most closely in tune with Fallout as with looking at the trailer, I can see a lot of things, a lot of elements uh, involved in Rogue Nation that are going to be in Fallout. So if you want to watch Mission Impossible, if you want to have a marathon, then uh, you can watch from Mission Impossible 3 to the current one, Rogue Nation. Or if you don't really have time for that, then just watch Rogue Nation and that should help you out with uh, catching up to speed with um, everything that's going on. The plot is rather complex, it's simply put, it's about Hunt trying to steal some information for the bad guy, played by Sean Harris, who's brilliantly cold-blooded in this, and that's all I can say about the film without revealing too much spoilers. Rogue Nation is a great action film, it doesn't quite match the intensity that Ghost Protocol had. See this if you love incredible stunts, great action and a charismatic 
lead in Tom Cruise. I think Tom Cruise is absolutely fantastic at what he does and he never lets you down and never makes you feel that you've wasted your ticket money. Please like this video, but also if you could go to my YouTube channel and subscribe, I'll put a link down below for you to do that. And um, feel free to comment on this as well. If you'd like to see any videos in the future, I'm welcome to suggestions and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.